Dear fellow students, speakers and partners, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the sixth annual Aarhus Symposium. My name is Camilla and this is Line and together we are the steering committee of Aarhus Symposium 2016. This year, Aarhus Symposium sheds light on the theme, the art of power. To prepare you for today's inspiring talks and discussions, we would like to share with you a short video. When you hear the word power, many of you may think of hierarchies, military forces, dictatorship. But isn't power about seeking opportunities? In the world of business, skillful leaders utilize these opportunities, even when challenged by the unpredictable. Established companies face challenges as new actors enter the market and redefine the status quo. Those who rest on their laurels will quickly lose their position, especially in this digital age. But even the most powerful companies may find themselves powerless on a global scale. When companies operate across borders, new challenges arise. Imagine how international political conflicts or humanitarian crises may suddenly affect your business strategy. Competent leadership is a crucial advantage in solving these challenges. A skillful leader recognizes and understands the cultural norms that differ across countries when putting power into practice. Some even manage to generate their own powerful position as they hold courage and a strong personality. Whether power is associated with limitations or opportunities thus depends on the leader's abilities. The theme of Aarhus Symposium 2016 is The Art of Power. that the video leaves you with a lot of curiosity and interesting questions. To mark the beginning of today's program, we have invited one of the most powerful individuals in Denmark. He will present his view on this year's theme. Please help me welcome on stage the Prime Minister of Denmark, Lars Løkke Rasmussen. Thank you, thank you for the warm welcome and, and thank you for inviting me to deliver the opening speech. I consider myself uh, lucky to get the opportunity to be here today and meet with the leaders of tomorrow. Being someone who is, no, I'm not the leader of yesterday, I'm the leader of today, but <laughs> you are the leaders of tomorrow and I, I feel privileged to be here and uh, I think you should consider you lucky as well. Not because you are listening to me, but because you got a ticket for Aarhus Symposium. I'm told they were sold out in, in, in like three minutes. The theme this year is, as we just witnessed, the art of power. And the speakers list is impressive. Presidents, CEOs, founders, directors, you name it. Prior to today, I took a look at your website for Aarhus Symposium and I stumbled across a quote regarding the art of power. It said, leaders who successfully manage the art can accomplish extraordinary things. Leaders who do not will stumble and miss great opportunities. I hope that is not true. Because if leadership is measured by the absence of stumbling, there wouldn't be many good leaders left, if any, and I can assure you that I wouldn't be invited. <laughs> and I don't think it's true either. In fact, I think it is the other way around. Leaders who haven't tried to stumble can hardly be said to master the art of power. And I'm not just saying that because I'm leader of a very small minority government. I honestly think that stumbling shows that you are trying to achieve high goals. If stumbling 
makes you wiser. You shouldn't be afraid to fall. That goes for leaders in both private companies, public institutions, and in politics. And it goes for the leaders of tomorrow as well. Or, as they say in Korea, from which I returned only a few days ago, even a monkey can fall from a tree. Now, speaking of the art of power, it is tempting to start by quoting everyone from Machiavelli to Mark Zuckerberg, but I won't do that. Instead, I will tell you who ha has formed my, my own view on, on political power. N.F.S. Grundtvi. And why him? Well, because Grundtvi, one of the most important things uh, about power, he said, it is its limitation. Limitation of the power of, of the state in order to secure the individual freedom of speech, freedom to pursue happiness, freedom to involve as a human being. And to me, the true art of power is to empower. To empower my own children to take a stand. To empower the boys in the Lücke Foundation who is on the edge of the society to stand up and realize that this society actually gives, gives them a lot of opportunities. To empower you to become excellent students. To empower everyone to fulfill their potential. And this is not only my vision, or Grundtvig's vision for that matter. It has been a fundamental source of Danish democracy for centuries. 200 years ago, we introduced compulsory school attendance because we wanted to empower the children of that time. And 100 years ago, a persistent group of women and some men fought for women's right to, to vote because they wanted to empower women with the same fundamental rights as, as men. And today, here in Aarhus, we are gathered at a top-class university, free of charts and full of opportunities, because Denmark wants to empower you to fulfill your dreams. And this tradition of empowerment on any level is, I think, a distinctive Danish value. And to me, its importance can't be overstated. In fact, it has been the guiding principle to me as a politician and as a leader and as a father. And this is also the reason why I, 15 years ago, proposed to grant each patient in this country the power to choose a private hospital if the public hospital couldn't deliver. It was, in, in these days, those days, somewhat controversial, to say the least. But to me, it was, it was evident. Empowering the patient with the freedom to choose is not only prudent, it is basically the only decent thing to do. And today, empowerment of patients is an integrated part of the Danish healthcare system. We make the money follow the patient so that if public healthcare can't deliver the diagnosing or treatment we expect for them within a reasonable time frame, then the patients are empowered to go somewhere else. And the same principle of empowerment goes for our wish to uh, liberalize the current plan, plan act or in Danish plain law. For, for many years, politicians in, in Copenhagen and powerful interest groups have seemed to think that they know what is best for the citizens in the rural districts. Well, having served as a city councillor and a county mayor for many years, I can only say they don't. Local empowerment and democracy are essential to local development because it provides people with the incentive to act, to get involved, to take matters into their own hands and to make a difference. And that is important. This feeling of taking things into your own hands and to make a true difference is important at any level and almost any cases. We need to empower each other to do our best. All that said, when empowered to make decisions, 
you are morally obliged to act responsibly. And that goes for politicians, and that goes for CEOs, and headmasters, and teachers, and students. And this might seem obvious, but it is not. Neither historically nor at present. In, this years, in, in these years, we witnessed powerful populist movements and individuals gaining ground in, in many parts of Europe and across the Atlantic, for that matters, or on the far left and on the far right. Movements and, and persons who claiming to be the only ones representing the people, fighting for justice, fighting for jobs, fighting for the man on the floor. And these movements vary in their outset, but they have something in common. They fail to take responsibility. Why? Because they most often only point out the problems, but fail to come up with coherent and, and lasting solutions. And in a complex world, and definitely we are living in a complex world, we must not allow ourselves to be tempted by simplistic solutions. Because simplistic solutions, they are always too simple. This is to some extent also the case when it comes to the European Union. In these years, we witness widespread skepticism towards the EU in, in many, many member states. In Denmark, and the British have even decided to leave the Union without having any clear idea of what they want instead. And you could ask why. Because they feel that the European Union has too many flaws and deficiencies not working as it, as it should. And, and to some extent, of course, I can understand the feeling, and I guess we all can understand that feeling. But what is the solution? Well, the irresponsible solution is to turn the back on the community, regardless of the consequences and, and without any clear idea of what to do instead. In contrast, the responsible solution is to start making things work, come up with realistic solutions instead of just pointing fingers. And this has been my fundamental approach to power and politics since the day I was elected chairman of the Young Liberals 30 years ago in 1986, and it still is. In my mind, powerful movements, persons and parties are morally obliged to present realistic, transparent and coherent solutions in order to empower people to take an enlightened stand. And this leads me to my final point, which is in fact more of a reminder, not at least to you, the leaders of tomorrow. We Danes are a modest people, and perhaps sometimes too modest. But we don't actually need to be. We have, we have developed a very well-functioning society. It's not the perfect society, but we are one of the happiest, richest, most stable, competitive, and innovative countries in the world. And I was reaffirmed by this on my recent state visits in Korea. They are profoundly impressed and inspired by our small country. For instance, they have just opened a continuation school outside Seoul in the spirit of Grundtvig because they can see the value of our broad societal approach to education. And I must admit that it warms my heart and it makes me proud and it inspires me to keep fighting for an even better future. And I hope the same goes for you, the leaders of tomorrow. You shouldn't be too modest. You should be proud of yourself. Don't be afraid to strive for influence. Seize the day, seize the power to make Denmark and the world a better place. 
But when you have seized it, remember that along with power and opportunities comes responsibility. And be aware that the true art of power is to empower your surroundings to fulfill their potential. I wish you all a good and inspiring symposium. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lars Lykke Rasmussen, for kicking off our Symposium 2016. Please accept this gift, as we are truly honored by your contribution as our opening speaker. Thank you. Before we begin, I, ha I will kindly ask track one to head to the Juske Bank Auditorium and track two to head to the TDC Group Auditorium where your sessions will begin shortly. Track three and four, remain seated. <laughs> 